so pleased to be welcoming um, Dr. Keir Milburn, um, who's the author of Generation Left and a lecturer in political economy and organization at the University of Leicester. Um, thank you so much for being here. I keep saying the floor is yours. I need to find a synonym, but the virtual floor is yours. So thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, uh, and I just want to, um, I want to, 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 to emphasise what Gargi just said, really. Uh, my starting point is this. I, I think you lot are involved in something important. And when I say you lot, I mean the people watching this rally, the people speaking at this rally. And I think you might be, it might turn out that you're involved in something very, very important because I think what's been emerging over the last few months is the beginning of a renewed student movement. A, a student movement that's been doing some really accelerated collective learning about the institutions that we're all involved in, you know, the contemporary university, uh, what people have been calling the marketized uh, university. Uh, and I'd want to push that even further and say what, what we are facing, the institution we're involved with, is the financialized university. Um, I'll come to that a bit later. I, I want to say that, this, that, that there's a, been a learning process about, about what is this institution how does it relate to us and how do we exercise a bit of power within that institution? That's been going on for a while, I think. And in fact, I want to take you back 10 years. I want to take you back to, to the student movement of 2010 to illustrate how this story has unrolled over the last decade. Um, so 10 years ago, there, there was this, a student movement which was incredibly dynamic, incredibly militant, in fact. Uh, it, it sprang up because student fees were tripled. They tripled up to £9,000 fees. Also, there was the abolition of something called the Education Maintenance Allowance, which, which was a, a small allowance that allowed students who are 16 to 18 to, to, to go to finish their A-levels, etc. And it was an incredibly dynamic movement. Very large protests, weekly protests sometimes, actually, for a while. Um, lots of students were, were went in, lots of uh, universities under occupation. Um, famously, the Conservative Party HQ got, got stormed at Millbank, Millbank Tower. I can look back at that movement now after a decade and, and you can see what an incredibly important moment that was, not just for higher education, but for the but for the wider country. And in fact, I think that sparks in the UK what, what, what I've called generation left. This this quite a dramatic turn to the left by by young people. Unfortunately, there's also been a bit of a turn to the right amongst many older people to offset that. Uh, and in fact, I think without that student movement of 2010, perhaps the whole Corbyn moment would have looked very, very, very different, I think. So these moments, the moments that I think is emerging at, the, at this time now, I think they can have long lasting and widespread effects. The point is this, though. The 2010 student movement was supposed to be the last time that ever happened. Right. That's the point. That's why you introduced £9,000 fees. You introduce £9,000 fees to change the way students think about their education, to try to construct students as consumers, as customers in a marketized university. And if you're a consumer, if you're a customer, you could have interest in conflict with the staff who work there, the students, the, 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 the lecturers and the professional services staff, et cetera. The, the, the one point where I realized that, that, that it wasn't playing out the way that they planned it was was in 2018, actually. I'm giving you a bit of a history lesson. <laughs> in 2018, a UCU, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Lecture and Professional Services Union, we went on strike around pensions. And to everybody's surprise, that, 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 that strike turned out to be incredibly dynamic and very, 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 very militant and um, uh, uh, really energized uh, uh, a strike. It would really surprised people to some degree. And the absolute, well, I think one of the things that was going on there was um, that uh, a lot of the, the younger staff, the more precarious staff at universities, they'd been involved in the student movement of 2010 and they carried those lessons on. They'd carry those lessons on and they were driving some of us older heads in UCU on, I think. Uh, but um, what, I, what I would say is the best thing about the 2018 student movement was the incredible support that we, that, that, no, the 2018 strikes, I mean to say, the UCU strike was the incredible support we got from the students. And in fact, many students occupied their universities. At the University of Leicester, we had a student, students occupied the administration building. The first occupation in at the University of Leicester since 1977, we were told, um, which was, it was just, I cannot emphasize just how heartening that sort of solidarity between students and staff is. And then we have this year, the most strange of year, the pandemic. And I think 
when the pandemic hit and universities were wondering what to do about that, I think there was a tension. There was a potential for real tension between the demands of students and the demands of of staff, faculty, and professional services. Because I can tell you this, the staff at universities were actually quite shocked that we were being given little choice about whether we did face-to-face -face teaching or worked, went to work in libraries, et cetera, where in conditions where, where, where we, we were at some sort of risk, we were at risk of, of getting infection ourselves and infecting our loved ones, et cetera. We were sort of being forced to do this thing. It came as a surprise to us. And, and um, at the same time, I think many students were wondering why they'd been uh, advised to go back to universities, uh, uh, to go to campuses, to take up uh, accommodation at halls or in other rented accommodation. Why were they being told to do that when so little teaching was actually face to face? These things could have been intention, I think. But what's happened as, the, as, as, as things have gone on and as the semester's gone on is um, I think we both realized, staff and students have realized that the, that the problem that we might be facing from opposite sides have been caused by the same thing, which is the, the structure of the contemporary high, higher education. And uh, I think the, the rent strikes that have happened in Manchester successfully have been fantastic uh, in, in recognizing the important role that student rents play in, in the business models of universities. Universities aren't actually businesses, but they are run as, as though they are these days. Um, and obviously we think that part of the reason that face-to-face that -face teaching was being insisted on was to make a justification for getting students to come back to campus and take it and pay their rents, right? To, to, to solve the business, to, 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 to uh, address the, the, the business model of universities. Ultimately, it was the government's fault for not, for not um, giving money to the universities, but I think that helps us explain some of the decisions that have been taken this year. I think we want to push that analysis a little bit further, not just the marketization of universities, the financialization of universities, because what happens when you get a market in higher education is that many, many universities have taken out loans. They've taken out loans to build shiny buildings that look nice in a brochure. Those loans come with conditions. And I know for a fact that many universities conditions, they have got loans which say they cannot make an operating loss even for just one year or their interest rates will go up for the rest of the, the period of the loan, perhaps 10 years or 20 years. So that helps us explain or understand again some of these decisions that are being made by senior management at universities. In fact, it's, it's these financial institutions which are setting the conditions upon which our universities are, are, are being run and are, I, you know, that's, that may be, you may, you may say, well, that's very interesting, Dr. Milburn, but how is it going to help us? Well, I think it can help us in this way. We need to do our homework. Why don't we go and find out who, what, what firms own these loans, right? Um, what other businesses are these, are these companies that own the loans involved in? Have we got some potential allies there? Have we got some potential new points of leverage there? This is an approach to, to, to unionism called social unionism or social movement unionism, which has really taken off in the US. And I, I don't know if people have followed. There's been a, a series of very, very successful uh, teacher strikes in Chicago, uh, in Wisconsin and around the US. Um, and they've been following this model of thinking about uh, uh, trying to incorporate the whole body of, of, an, of an institution, students and staff, but also you know, the other people that we might be in alliance with because the people who own the loans that, that, that universities have taken up, they may well be involved in other things which may help us out. This, this approach, uh, 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 you can, if you want to think about this approach a little bit more, you could Google bargaining for the common good. Or in fact, there's a, a new book just being released by Alice Martin and Annie Quick called Unions Renewed, who, who, who really go through how can we win and fight in, in a world, in a financialized world. So that's my, that's my, um, that's the point I wanted to make really. I think the marketized university, the financialized university, they're not as strong as they, as they appear. They've got weak points. The rent strikes have spotted one of those weak points. Let's find more of them and let's use them, staff and students together to exercise some power over the over the, the future direction of universities. I think if we can do that, then we can create a movement which really could have big effects even beyond higher education. I'll leave that there. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Milburn. I, I, I think those are very, very apt words. I think more and more we need to, as a movement, look at how we are, how we are reviving as a movement and actually think about how do we re re-strategize? How do we really, you know, grab them by the horns and, and get those tension points and, and, and force these institutions, force this system to, to actually, you know, do what it's supposed to do and, and serve yeah. students. And I think that's really, really important. And, and I hope all of you students here, I saw in the comments, lots of people are saying we need to do this and that. Like, let's do it. Let's galvanize. Let's get together. Let's make it impossible for them to say no to us. And let's get education to what it fundamentally needs to be a public good, a right for all, something that is free, accessible, fully funded. I'm not, I'm never going to stop saying it until I see it. I'm never going to stop saying it. So Dr. Milburn, you, you, you said it perfectly. And I think a lot of people are inspired by your words. So thank you so much and um, again if you want to join the collective and, and get involved in that strategy and put a strategy to action we've got the link down below